Hi, welcome back to Pottery Class. Glad you were here today. This is Pottery Class number three for distance pottery, and today we are making these owls out of a slab. Um, so this video will show you how to make this slab into an owl, and then I'll post another video with the details on how to glaze the owl. So in your project kit, you'll have a slab um, like this, and you can cut open your Ziploc bag and gently remove it from the bag and put it on a surface, a nonstick surface like a cardboard box um, or a piece of wood that's unfinished so that you have something to work on top of. You'll also have a paper plate that's going to be our template to cut out a circle. And then I always like to have a paintbrush, something to scratch with. So I will probably use my needle tool a lot, but you can use a toothpick. And if you have an old gift card or old credit card to smooth with, you can use that for a rib. Um, your kit, you also got to choose one stamp to do some texture. So we're gonna go over um, how to do some stamping and I've got a couple stamps over here that I'm going to use. Um, uh, optional tools are a sponge um, and a chopstick type object. You can also just use the end of your paintbrush for any kind of designs that we want to carve into the surface. So this is where we're going. You can see I used my stamp here on the body as well as here on the ears. And then I used the tip of my paintbrush for the other decorations. So this one will look a little bit different. Um, I like to make everything just a little bit different. So here we go. Um, and don't forget your water bucket. I always forget to tell you something. Um, I always like to have a little bit of water around. So our first step, we've got our slab out of our plastic bag and on our cardboard box or some kind of surface. And then you can take your finger, your gift card, your credit card, or your rib, if you have one, and you can smooth out your clay. And I'm gonna smooth out both sides of my clay. And this just takes out that um, texture from the canvas where I rolled the slab so that we have a nice smooth start. If you ever get little bubbles, I've got a couple of bubbles in here. You can just pop them with a needle tool or your toothpick. Um, to make them go away, but these shouldn't cause uh, much of an issue because most of those are gonna be in our scraps. Okay, so there's side one. I'm gonna flip, and now I will um, smooth side two. So just to show you that again, to flip, I take it with two hands, and gently peel it up, bring it forward, and then lay it back down. And that keeps it from stretching out or getting a hole in it or fingerprints in it. If I use two hands and I use a really light touch. So this is side two and you can tell I'm not using any water right now. If I have a lot of water on this clay, then it will want to stick to my surface. So we'll use a very limited amount of water. If your, if your slab for some reason feels stiff for example, if it's been in the box for a while, if you have a spray bottle, you can spray it and that will help loosen it up and soften it up. Um, you may, if you do have um, a slab that's a little bit too hard, you may just want to spritz it with your water bottle and then cover it up with some plastic and let that moisture soak in rather than evaporate and then get going on your project after the clay has some time to absorb the water. Okay, so here we go, we've got two smooth sides. So you'll take your paper plate, and you'll place it on the slab. Um, just make sure that there's clay on all sides. You don't want it hanging off the side at all. You just wanna have it on top of the slab. 
Then we're gonna cut it out. And then you're gonna have a little circle, just like that. Okay, so now we have our circle that we just cut out. And I'm gonna get one finger's worth of water from my bucket, and then I'm gonna rub these edges. So I'm not using very much water at all because we don't want it to stick to the table. It's super annoying to have to unstick your clay from the table. So just a little bit of water will help. If it sticks, you just have to kind of work with it with your thumbs to peel it up, and it can stretch a little bit on you. So. I'm gonna go ahead and peel mine up to make sure that we don't have any sticking issues. And sometimes if your board gets saturated with water, you just need to move it around and find a spot that's a little bit more dry and then it won't stick so much. But here we have a nice and smooth circle. So our first step that we're going to do is we're going to do texture here for the belly. So eventually we're gonna fold this circle to make the owl. So we're gonna start in this area right here to make um, the breast of our owl. So whatever texture you have, you can use to make this design. I used the petal or feather stamp on this one because I thought it looked like the feathers on a bird. Um, but you can do anything right there. Anything's gonna look really cute. So, I'll probably try something new. Um, let me do, I'll do swirlies for the belly. Okay, so you really can't go wrong with this. Um, I'm just gonna take this stamp, this swirly stamp, and I'm gonna start sort of just a little bit above the middle, and I'm gonna rock that stamp into the clay, and then I'm gonna work my way down. And so we're gonna make a tapered triangular shape. And the thing with these stamps, they're made out of clay. They've been fired once into the state called bisqueware. They can get wet after a while and then they'll start to stick to the clay. So if you feel like after a few stamps, it's getting sticky and it's sticking inside of your stamp, you just need to let it rest and dry for a little bit so you can Stick it in front of your air vent or put it in the sunshine and that'll dry and get less sticky. You don't wanna wash it with water because then it's gonna be really, really wet and it takes a long time to dry. But mine's doing pretty good because my clay is not very wet. And I just kinda of rock it. I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom so you can see on this one I did texture to the bottom as well, even off the edge a little bit, just to complete that look. So here is a look at what this looks like. So far, lots of little swirls, really cute. And now we're going to fold in the wings. So we're gonna look and see, I'll give you a look at what we're doing again. There's our little owl. So the wings are gonna fold in and not quite meet in the middle. So we're gonna get an idea of how far in we're going to go. So I'm gonna make a mark on my clay. I like to taper this just a little bit so it's a little more narrow at the top, a little bit wider at the bottom. And I'm just gonna make a mark inside here on both sides where the curve of the wing is going to reach. And I'm making a mark just before that. Then I'm gonna lay it back open. You take your toothpick or your needle tool, whatever you have, and you're going to score. I'm gonna finish out the curve of that so I know that I'm gonna score in this area. So scoring 
is simply scratching the surface. I'm not cutting through the clay. These are very light scratches. It will cover up some of your texture, most likely. That's okay. We want it to overlap to look like the wings are laying over the texture of the belly. There's no specific pattern um, that you have to do for this. It's all one. Okay. So then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just kind of trace out that curve and you can, again, use your visual of how you want the wings to look. And then you score on this side very lightly, not cutting through your clay. We don't want to cut off our wings. We're just going to gently scratch. Kind of an ovally shape a, or a leaf shape here. So we're gonna have um, points on either end. And as you can see, I'm not opening this all the way back up because I want the clay to get used to being folded. And so if I continually fold it back and forth, it will crack in these seams we are going to have to reinforce a little bit because since it is such a big fold, we might see some cracks. So I'm just going ahead and letting them start to flop in a little bit. So our next step, I'm gonna rinse my hands a little bit in my bucket. We are going to add water. So this is the slip part of the process. So I've got my little paintbrush right here. And I'm gently tapping some water on here and this helps make it sticky. So we're gonna double score today so that these seams really stick well. So I'll show you in my paintbrush. I just added a little bit of water. So I'm building up a slip on the surface here. If you were in class, I would have a bowl of just really, really sloppy clay called slip and we would lay that on but water does the trick. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fold that in and press it on down. This is right now a pretty light press. And then I'm gonna do this side and then we will press them both pretty firmly. Okay, so now I've gotta add water here so we're making our slip on this side. I am not soaking it. I'm just tapping to get some water in those grooves. So not soaking it at all. Just getting it wet enough to make a little bit of slip on here. So this is my second score. So we're double scoring, really, really light. Just kind of mixing that water in all the way to the edge. And now, we're going to fold. And so we wanna to match to make sure that this is even. So I'll show you mine. If it looks like you need a little bit more, just press it in a little further. You can see mine's just a little more narrow at the top and a little bit wider at the bottom. There's no precise measurement that you have to have. Um, your wings can be a little bit more open, a little bit more closed. Um, here's my example again. Everything's just gonna be a little bit different, but look at that texture, isn't that cute? I love it. So I'm just pressing this down. Now I'm applying um, a little bit more pressure. I do have some cracks along this side, small cracks. I am going to make sure that my clay is not sticking. And then I'll take a finger, just one finger's worth of water, and rub out cracks along that edge. So this is an outer edge. It will be visible at the end. So I'm gonna take some time to make sure that it looks really nice. And then I'll do the same on the other side. Yeah, that's awesome. Smoothing, smoothing. 
Hand building is all about the smoothing. Just one more fingerprint of water, so I'm barely using any water here. And I'm smoothing out the wings, just like this. If you have any slip or scratches that are showing through, you can take your paintbrush and smooth them out really gently. And this part will be folded down so you don't have to worry about anything in that area. And that looks pretty good. All right, so now we get to do texture for the wings here. And I did some stripes on this one, and I did little, so I did the stripes with the end of a paintbrush or the tip of a chopstick. So I just drew some little lines, and then I did some dots on a few of those rows. Um, so I'm going to show you how the petal stamp looks. Um, and I'm just going to stamp from maybe a third of the way down the rest of the way. So here we go. This is my, I'm, I made it to be a petal stamp, but it's the closest thing that I have to a feather and I think it works really well in this context. It really has that feathery vibe. And again, if your stamp starts to stick just give it a break, blow on it. You can see mine gets a little bit darker as it gets wet. Um, and this stamping is good because it's going to reinforce this fold that we made here. And if again, if you see cracks, you can come back, smooth them, release your clay from your board, make sure you're not sticking. My board is really getting kind of wet, you can see right here. So. I'm gonna try to keep moving it around. Do some little half stamps. That's the cool thing about these stamps. You don't have to use the whole thing. Just use the part that you need. You can go all the way to the edge. Okay. So there's two um, complementary textures right there. I love texture. I do all kinds of things with texture in my hand building. It's really, it's really amazing how it changes um, the look. Okay, so next we are going to stroke this out a little bit. I have just a little bit on my fingers right here. And what we're doing is we're just making the clay a little bit wider because this is gonna fold down to here. Your top corner is folding down to make this part of the owl's head. So where you folded it over, you can just lift up your clay a tiny bit, squeeze it out. So for those of you that have done pinch pots, it's the same idea. We're just really gently squeezing it out. Um, if you have really little hands, this is a good part for an adult to help with. And it's just a really light touch. And so mine just looks like this, just curves out a tiny bit. You don't need much at all. So again, we're gonna get ready to fold it. If you are not ready and you're still working, just pause the video and press play when you're ready. There's no rush here at all. But what I'm gonna do is gently start to fold this down and see what looks good. If you have cracks on the back, don't worry about it because we know how to fix those. So I'm folding down about three inches. So this isn't all the way, but it's starting to look like this. So here again, that's what we're going for. And now I know about how much I'm folding. And I'm gonna uncurl it part of the way, make my little marks. And then I'm gonna score all in here. So I'm gonna turn this around so I can see it. And I'm making sure not to score below where this is gonna fold over because I want this the scoring to all be hidden in here. Um, it's optional to score down here. It's a little bit lower, so 
you don't have to worry about that too much. But I'm gonna score, you know, the bottom of the head and then the top part of these wings, this whole area. We're gonna do that double scoring technique with the addition of the water in between. Really gentle scratches again. We're not cutting through. We definitely don't wanna cut through. And I'm using my hand to support this clay. Um, the bottom clay's got the support of the table, but the top clay is just hanging out there until we press it all the way back down. So I'm giving it some good support. So this is what um, the clay looks like with the scoring. And now we're gonna add the water. So here we go with the paintbrush water. I'm just tapping it on there. And I tap it instead of painting it. Um, to me, when I paint it on, I don't get as much on there and it smooths out my um, scoring that I did. So I just kind of dot, dot, dot around and you wanna go all the way up to the edges. And then we will re-score to mix that water all in. We build up our slip. If you see any spots that look especially dry, you can add some more. If you see any spots that look especially wet, you can always take your paintbrush and um, clean it up. So then we're gonna lay this down. So I did my double scoring. And now we are pressing it down. If you're gonna get cracks, it's gonna happen now. So you can see I've got some little cracks going on, but we're not too worried about that. So I'm gonna give it some pressure. We have our shape pretty much made. So you can take, if you have a hole like mine, <laughs> I have a little bit of a hole right there. I'm gonna take just a pinch of clay off of that scrap clay and fill in my hole. And then again, with that one fingerprint of water, I'm gonna smear it. And smooth it. And one fingerprint of water really does go a long, long way. And again, to make these corners of the head go out, just pressing the clay a little bit really helps with that. But I'm still doing very, very gentle pressure. Clay likes to move nice and slow. This is where we are. If you have some more cracks, you can work on the back, but you don't wanna work on the back and then lay it down wet, and then it sticks to the table. So that's why I'm holding mine up. If you're holding yours up, just be gentle with it. Gentle, gentle. Okay, so I have a little slip coming out on the edges. I'm gonna take a pretty dry paintbrush Clean that out, and then clean out this edge. Same thing if you have any scoring marks on the back, you can smooth those out too. Okay, so while you have it picked up, we're going to squeeze right here. And that just squeezes out the ears, just a tiny bit. So you don't wanna do it with totally dry hands, just get a little bit of water and just like we did on the other side, we're gonna squeeze this clay up and out, like so. And then smooth the little cracks. And you really don't need much, okay? That's all I'm gonna do for that side. Then I'm gonna do the other side. Try to make a match up. So this is, more of our pinching technique. And if you got one higher than the other, just take the shorter side and make it match up. So 
this is about all I want to do for that. And then I'm rubbing out some of these fingerprints that I have. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can tilt that down just a little bit so you can see. Now we're doing some face details on here. Okay, I think that's good. So the eyes are a big deal for owls. Um, they have such big eyes. It's really cool to see. Um, it's gonna be really cool to see. So you can do use your stamp for the eyes. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my chopstick. So same idea as the end of a paintbrush. And I'm gonna pick out spots for two eyes. Let me show you my sample again. You can do a lot with the glazing for the eyes to bring them out. So if this isn't your forte, you can really do your accents when you do the painting part. So I'm gonna make the center pupil. And I'm just sort of centering it up over one wing. Then on the other side, doing another. So I've got two dots. And now I'm gonna make a circle. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle. And then remove some clay crumbs. Go around again. And then smooth it out. Smooth, smooth, smooth. This is a good carving tool. Then on the other side, I'm gonna do it again. If you've got clay on the tip, just knock it off so that it's not in your way. Here we go. I just go around a few times and then wipe away what extra clay I can. And you can take as much time on this as you want. Or you could save this part for glazing, because I know you guys are really good at glazing. I'm not. <laughs> I'm okay. It's just not my favorite part. Let's see. There's a lot of glare on there. The sun sometimes makes this hard. Okay, so let's do another circle around to make the eyes just a little bit bigger. concentrating so hard on this it's hard to watch what your point of view is here we go okay Okay, so there's some eyes. Now, I think we need some eyelashes. So again, with the tip of your paintbrush or your chopstick, you can see some eyelashes. and I'm doing them pretty short. But it really gives them a pop. Okay. And now I'm gonna do just a little decoration here to continue to accentuate those eyes. Just doing a V down the middle here. A V inside of a V. Then I'll do some stripes under the eyes. Okay. 
And now, since I have my handy stamp, I stamp an ear. And I think he's missing something. I think we need to do a nose. So, here we go. This is where your scrap clay comes in. So, just wanna grab a little scrap, then grab your cutting tool, so whatever that is, your needle tool or your toothpick, and we're gonna smooth it out, make sure it looks nice and smooth on top. And we're gonna cut triangle for the nose. And I just freehand the triangle. Then I'm gonna smooth out the edges just like I do, just like I did with the circle. And I don't want the nose to be sharp, sharp, or it could chip pretty easily. So there is my nose. Boop. And it's gonna go right here on the owl. So try it on your owl. See which way it looks the best. Make sure it looks even, because the nose is a pretty good um, focal point for your piece. And then you're gonna see like where this lays. And you score under that nose. Then you score the back except for the tip because the tip will most likely hang off. Then add a tiny bit of water. Score it just a bit more. And down goes the nose. And give it some good pressure, but be gentle. And then I clean up those edges with a paintbrush. All right, so check out our cool guy. You can do whatever decorations you wanna do to his face. You could give him freckles. Um, you can make his nose bigger than I did, it's or her. It's really up to you. So, we have one last step. We're going to add a wire here on the top, and we're gonna sign it. So let me get my wire. So you'll have a wire with your kit, and it'll be pretty short like this. It'll look like a paper clip, but this is a special metal that can go in the kiln. And we're gonna fold it in half, so you can just use your finger. This is a good job for an adult if you have little hands. So you're gonna fold it in half. I gotta clean up my hands a little bit. And then we're gonna stick it into his head up here. We wanna get it right into the clay. We don't want it sticking out the front or out the back. So we want it really anchored well in there. And then as we get it in, you don't wanna push it all the way in. You want a little bit coming out so that we can get a string through it so that it will hang like this. And then you can hang it in your window at your house or on your wall and have some beautiful wall art that you created. And then your last step is you have the whole back of your piece to put your name on. And you can put the year. It's really helpful to have a full name on there so I know whose it is and can get it back to the right person. So there is your precious little owl. Here's a better look. 
at that wire that goes in the top. And then you'll want to let this dry till it's not floppy anymore. So lay out um, for a few hours or cover it gently with your plastic bag and come back tomorrow and do the glazing video. And we'll finish it up. All right, great job. I can't wait to see what you did. And thank you for joining me today. Have an awesome afternoon or morning. <laughs> Bye.